A former presidential candidate in Nigeria, Kingsley Mogalu, has accused the Nigerian army of arson in Imo State. Nigeria's southeast shops and a hotel were set ablaze in a community in Oru East, local government area in Imo State, after a deadly clash between soldiers and suspected members of the pro Biafra group IPOB. A soldier and a suspected member of IPOB were shot dead during the clash. Well, joining us to discuss this is public affairs analyst Francis Chilaka and public affairs consultant Tobechi Chibu. Thank you very much, uh, gentlemen, for joining us. Welcome. Okay. All right. Now, I I'm going to start with you, Tobechi, because you seem to um, be uh, aware of what exactly is happening on, um, you know, in that particular local government area. Is it true that you had a someone close to you get shot? Tobechi, can you hear me? All right, Francis, I'll, I'll, I'll toss this question to Francis until we're able to get Tobichi to, you know, hear us. Um, Francis, now, Kingsley Mogalu is saying that this was an arson. Uh, he's blaming the army for high-handedness. Uh, and, you know, he's putting all the blame at the doorstep of the army, especially because many have said that the army should not necessarily be having... Um, to, to do the job of the police, uh, the police in these communities. But this isn't the first time the army has been invited to Imo State, is it? Francis, can you hear me? Um, Tobechi, I did ask earlier on if um, you knew exactly what transpired that led to um, the issue between the army and suspected members of IPOB. And uh, you also claim that you have or you know a family member of yours that was shot by the army. Yes, that's correct. Um, in fact, with uh, six children, I am the first. Uh, on the 30th of April this year, the army shot and killed Al Amon, the family. His name is Nubal Egeribe Chibu. He was shot in cold blood at about 9 o'clock on his way back from his um, shawarma and fish barbecue shop. Going back to his family, was shot about um, 200 meters from where he lives, from where he and his family lives, around um, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock in the night. Uh, what, 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 what exactly put him and the army in the same location? Was there a surveillance? Was there a curfew? Shouldn't people have been moving around at the time of the day when you said he was shot? Now, on the 30th of April this year, that was when the jailbreak, I think, and a few other issues that um, were happening in, in and around Uwari and Imo State mm -hmm. took place. And um, yes, there was some, kind of, some st heightened state of insecurity at that time, and um, people were encouraged to try and go back to their houses before it is too late. Oh, well, normally he closes his shop about 11 o'clock, being a, a shawarma and fish barbecue shop. But because of the period of time that we're talking about, he closed at, at about 9 o'clock and was headed home. And in fact, from the spot where his, um, his barbecue shop is located to where he lives, it's only about a kilometer, right on the stretch road. I'm not, uh, I'm not quite a quiet man to all the road. So it's not, it's not a far distance. So he, he just felt like um, he closed early and then drive back to his home. Then about 200 meters to his home, he was, he was shot and killed. I'm curious to understand what exactly is happening. Do you think that these are IPOB members that are perpetrating this violence? And if they are, what are the people and the state doing to make sure that um, there is some sort of peace? And how can the army actually even tell the difference between, you know, you, the normal person who's going home, and an IPOP member? I'm curious. Uh, are the people unable? Are the people able? For example, you can you tell an IPOP member from a normal person in emo state? Um, frankly speaking, um, I've not set my eyes on anybody who's an iPod member or who uh, 
who is armed and um, about uh, confusion or bloodshed under the guise of IHOG. We already heard it in the news like everyone else. See it on, um, on the social media, perhaps where they have operated and left. Um, yes, I've uh, also um, had a, uh, around this area in which we live, uh, about three or four kilometers away, where the iPod was, uh, the, uh, whether it's iPod or ESN or non government as they are called, had allegedly attacked police stations, uh, sacked the officers in the stations, and uh, also the story is told that they carted away weapons from police police uh, checkpoints or police uh, stations. Yes, uh, every person who is um, a right, rightful thinking person who is, um, who is uh, interested in maintaining law and order, condemn this, and people we are told to try and be safe, stay safely where they are, and um, out of harm's way. This was generally the kind of things we were observing as, as uh, members of society who we believe. And um, we, we believe that the Nigerian security agencies were capable of hunting down those who are trading as a non-government uh, uh, or, or whatever name called, and um, and we pray that that normal business. It was no curfew, but officially, there are no restrictions. Just by this good plan, people should try and stop their houses before the late. That was okay. what this young man was observing when he was, when he was shot and killed. Mm. Uh, and uh, Francis, let's talk about what King Zimogalu is saying about this issue. He's accused the Nigerian army of arson in Imo State. Um, of course, he also um, talks about the high-handedness and the fact that uh, he, amongst many other people, have queried why we have had to have the army come into um, Imo State to deal with the issue. But again, we know that we've had the issue of unknown gunmen, not just in the southeast, but in you know even before we started calling them bandits in some parts. Um, why do you think that the army keeps continuously being called into issues of policing, knowing that these people are not trained to police? Well, uh, Sorry, the, this question is for Francis Chilaka. Sorry, this is for Francis, not not you, Tobichi. Okay, um, you know, the thing is, we need to ask ourselves um, in a democratic setting, what is um, the core responsibility of the army? Um, the army is meant to um, ward off um, external aggression, unlike what we're having in Nigeria today, not only in, in, uh, in the southeast, we're also having it all around Nigeria, where you have soldiers uh, coming out from the barracks, and taking up the responsibility of internal security, for me, it is totally unacceptable. We need to we need to say the truth the way it is. And then looking at uh, taking it a step further, you ask yourself, um, what played out and what is playing out in the south is between the army and the so-called um, IPOP, ESN, unknown gunmen. It's, 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 it is like a charade. It's, it doesn't make any sense at all. If you follow the quick sequence of killings has gone in the southeast, the question you should be asking is where usually are these soldiers, these military men, when these unknown gunmen strike? And how come it is after they have struck that the army would now begin to unleash their lethal power on the ordinary civilians? No, there is no way anybody. I would not sit down here and support the killing of anybody because life is sacred. But if it happens, it is not an opportunity to raise down an entire village. The army may deny it, saying it is IPOP, but we know that IPOP cannot do this. ESM cannot do this. So we know, we, we all know the truth of what is happening there. And, you know, Moalu is saying it as it should be said. It is high time that Mr. President calls off the soldiers from the streets. They are meant to be in the barracks. They are meant to wake up external aggression. Why do we have policemen? Why do we have mobile policemen? Push them out there. 
if you feel that there's a high level of uh, insecurity, they should be there doing the job. It's not both the way soldiers are molesting people across the entire southeast. Yeah, um, as much as, I mean, I'm not in any way holding brief for the army, but could it also be the reason why the army is being brought in in, in this issue is that the police probably is overwhelmed? Don't forget that uh, police stations have been raised also um, in, in months before now. We've seen... Um, prison breaks. We've seen all of those things. Could it be that this was more like a reinforcement um, for the police by bringing the army to, to help the situation, even though I do not know if the situation is being helped, but could it be that that's why the army is being brought in in this particular case? Now, okay, if, you, if, if that is the reason why the army is being brought out, for how long will the army be out there? What is, it simply means that the governor of Imo State has lost control of the security architecture of the state. Because the governor should be in charge of the security. The governor should be able to know. But it's, each time things go wrong, we seem to have a governor that doesn't speak. He doesn't talk. He doesn't address issues the way they should be addressed. What, has, what is leading to all the um, unrest in Imo State? We need to find out what it is. You don't solve the problem by cutting it halfway. You solve the problem by looking for the root cause of the problem. And this is where the government needs to, at this point, you can begin to hold town hall meetings. Find out what is the cause, what is the problem. It must that used to be one of the, you know, um, other peaceful states in Nigeria. We used to be known as the peaceful state. That was why, if you remember, the former governor of Imo State, Mr. Sokolata, came up with his uh, Ministry of Happiness. It shows the kind of people we are. But today, what is playing out in Imo State is not who the Imo people are. So the governor himself has to answer to the people. He has to tell us what is wrong, what has gone wrong, and find a solution to it. Okay. Keeping the army there and allowing the army to go and rampage the way they are going is not going to solve this problem. All right. I have just two minutes to go. Quickly, I'm going to come back to you, Tabechi. Um, for someone who obviously is from Imo State, and, and, and taking from what Francis has said, the state has totally changed and it's unrecognizable. But let's talk solutions. How do we put an end to this? Yes, we know the governor has a role to play, the police has a role to play, but I was just talking to a former DSS um, uh, director and we were talking about um, surveillance and community policing and everybody, all hands being on deck. How can the Imo State people um, make sure that whoever they are, whether they be allegedly ESN or IPOB members or known gunmen, that these people are fished out and then that these dastardly acts uh, are put to an end instead of just sitting on the fence? Okay, my sister, I, I'll tell you some things that will shock you because Quickly, you've for the past minute. couple months since the incident of the killing of my brother, I've been searching for justice. I've engaged the army at all levels. Presently, we are in court with the army. And I managed to find out on advice from friends in the army, highly placed persons, that I should go look for a lawyer who is also a retired general from the army. In all of the houses, there are only two of them. I managed to engage one. And we went several to see the brigade commander at, by the fourth field at the brigade, obviously. It will shock you whether. What that uh, brigadier, brigadier, brigadier General told us on our visit to him. When, uh, when uh, my lawyer, the retired brigadier general, asked him if he knew me, he said, Yes, he knew me. If he knew the incident that, that happened concerning my younger brother, he said he knew it. And I asked him, What did he have to tell him? He said, Yes, from his investigations, that his soldiers stopped, stopped allegedly stopped my brother at the checkpoint where they were that night on the fateful day. And that when they flagged him down, he did not stop. And since he did not stop, that did he expect his soldiers to clap for my brother? That was how he put it. If he if they flagged him and he didn't stop, so did did we expect that his soldiers will clap for him? And then my, my lawyer said uh, is the punishment for, for riding a checkpoint to shoot and kill the person who is riding that checkpoint, who is defiling the checkpoint, assuming without considering that that was the case, that was it the punishment to shoot to kill? Why did you not shoot to demobilize? Why did you not 
uh, use your service vehicle, you have a brand new Hilux vehicle to chase after the person. If you if you reasonably suspect that he is driving alone, he was alone in his car, he is driving alone, pose any security threat. Mm. You should have run, run after him until you caught him. But you shot him, okay. you shot eight bullets, for example, you shot him three times from the back and also two to the head. Was that the punishment? By the way, what what was the name, the code name of the operation you are carrying in Limo State? He didn't tell us. He said, what were the rules of, rules of engagement that they are guiding the operations of the internal security operation that they were holding? He didn't tell us. Do you know what, what else he said? Quickly, we have to go. He said, General, if my boys had not killed people in Limo State the way they did, do you think we would have kind of peace we have in Limo State today? I am putting verbatim the brigade commander of the 4th Field Artillery Brigade. They wow. would um, we have the nightlife we are enjoying to today if my boys had not killed people the way they did. No more it's quite unfortunate what's happened to your brother, but we were all we're running out of time. So quickly, Frank, Francis, in 30 seconds, solutions. Well, for me, there's a solution, and the solution lies uh, in good governance and lies with the governor of Imo State being sincere to those who have voted him into power, holding a town hall meeting, and address all, you know, fred now. If, if the governor sits down with his people and discuss with them, I'm telling you, this whole tension in Imo State would die a natural death. Mm. Tobechi Chigbo, Francis Chilaka, thank you very much for being part of the conversation. We appreciate you. Thank you. Thank right. you. Well, thank you all for staying with us. It's been Plus Politics. Uh, we will leave you with the roundoff of all the conversations we've had this week on the show. I'm Mary Anacon, thanking you for watching, and do have a pleasant weekend. Andy Obama, Fred is a low uh, In this case, there is nobody support him. The international community monitored the election, and the international community represented by the EU and UK delegation is quite impressed by the processes and the outcome. The, the media, both local and international, were there. They are quite impressed. A lot of civil society groups very impressed, and uh, all the political parties, including the APC, starting with the national leader of the APC, President Muhammad Buhari, who has not only congratulated the winner, but says he's looking forward to working closely with Professor Soludo towards the development of not just an Anambra State, but the entire South. You know, obviously, with what the Boko Haram started that has now graduated to the advanced level, even the name of the group suggests to you that there is a hyper intolerance to holding divergent religious beliefs. Islamic State of West African countries, and what is the intention to establish the Islamic Caliphate? And so that means they are not willing to accommodate other religions. And it is not fair, really. Nigeria has such a rich heritage. It has such a rich history. Uh, we have another project, a really large one, um, in Epe. Uh, with that's my culture. It, preserving the Ajebu Kingdom. Um, and there was a series oh, of... Oh, that's Ekpe. Okay. Ekpe, exactly. Um, <laughs> and, and preserving sort of, you know, the, the canals that are around and really defining where they are. Um, as well, and we're going to be doing that with LiDAR technology from the air. The truth is that uh, the state government is just looking for a diversionary measure. They want a situation where people can be detracted from the real issues so that questions can not be asked about what our pensioners are passing through since the last two years of this administration. They don't want people to notice that civil servants have been passing through one verification or the other since the past two years. 
They don't want anybody to act about what is happening with the local government funds and other maladministration that is happening. That is why they are using Inhedioha as a distraction. And unfortunately for them, the people are not buying into that. Immolites are wiser. They have shown that they know what is happening and they have shown that they cannot be deceived. The, the truth and the reality of the matter is that all Nigerians can't leave the country. In as much as I have hoped and wish that that can happen, it's still our country. And um, we, 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 we have to deal with this. We have to keep on fighting. We have to keep on hoping. We have to um, still try and keep our, make our leaders accountable. Yes, there's despair uh, amongst young people, especially with the way government is denying it. But there's some small glimmer of hope where another government, Lagos State government, released this report. We operate, we operate a federal system, and Lagos is a federating unit of Nigeria. So there is still hope. Um, just because some people at the center are denying it doesn't necessarily mean they happen. It doesn't mean there won't be restitution. It doesn't mean that justice will not be served. We are hopeful, um, so we, we're not going to lose hope. This is a, 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 we are happy that this happened because it means that there's some small hope. It actually gives us a sign of hope that things might change. You're able it's difficult to, to educate a hungry man. It is. You try to educate them. You tell them that don't sell your vote, this, that, and that. And say, ah, Marianne, you're right. I know. But you see, that election comes. The person is hungry. You've educated her. You've gone, you're coming to work, you're busy every day. Then that person going for reps or assembly comes to her two days before elections. Gives her, them money and says to them, on election morning you get 2,000 and after the votes have been counted, come over, you'll get another two. And you now come out, you've been to work, you won't even be there, you'll be reporting on the day of the elections. And the person comes out again and says, Mama, don't forget to vote your conscience. What conscience?